Hey there guys, how's it going? This is Rex over here, and welcome back to another game tutorial, and today we're going to be doing is going over how to externally load sprites into your game maker games. So what we have going on is, as you can see, an object, and this object just happens to be named obj underscore player, and if I go ahead and run this, you'll notice right now we have zero sprites. There are no sprites loaded into our engine, but if I run the game, you'll notice that, there we go, we have a nice little sprite that shows up where our object player just was. Now, how is that possible if we don't have any sprites loaded in the engine? Well, that's where external loading comes in. It's basically making sure that, uh, or I guess not really making sure, but checking uh, this object, and it's going through uh, this code that I put in the create event. Just, you can really put it anywhere, I suppose. Um, although I've heard there's problems with the draw event. I don't really know. I've just tried it in the create event. Um, but basically what's going on here is it's saying spr underscore player, which is somewhat setting up uh, a variable I suppose equals sprite underscore add and then in parentheses working directory plus and then you know, in quotations uh, the name of the file that we're loading um, which is basically the picture sprite that that object is being given and then we just have some simple little values here and uh, it says what they are down here but I'll give into a little bit of detail of that in just a moment um, but then we have a second line that basically says sprite index equals spr underscore player now that might sound a little bit confusing but some of you guys might be able to pick out some of these um, uh, portions of code, so you might be able to recognize a few, uh, such as the sprite index here, which it is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically saying that um, we're setting up this variable, okay, this SBR underscore player variable, and it is equaling this sprite add value, or not, excuse me, not value, but uh, this piece of code. And this sprite add is basically saying that working directory and the reason that is there instead of, you know, um, well, I guess you wouldn't know, but um, it's basically there. So if you were to give this file to somebody else as like an exe, uh, it would basically just check um, where everything is stored in. So for instance, uh, this is the folder for the game. And so as you guys can see, there's a game file that we're working in right now. And then this right here, if I open it, is the picture or sprite. Uh, that we've loaded. And uh, what GameMaker is doing right here is working directory means wherever it is currently, wherever the GameMaker file is, it's checking for this file right here, GMLT, which is GameMaker uh, Loading Test, which you know you can name whatever you want, uh, .png. So if this was like a .jpg, you'd have to put .jpg, and then it just completes it with all this stuff. And once it finds it sprite index which is exactly what it sounds like the sprite index of this object is going to equal our variable that obviously we just set to this so <laughs> in short that's that's the technical way to explain it uh, in short uh, game maker is basically checking for picture file um, in the folder that we put the game maker fi or file in which is this right here once it finds it it's just assigning it to our object, which is this. <laughs> so I'd give you guys uh, two explanations there, just so you guys can get extra technical and understanding on that. But uh, yeah, that's essentially how that works. And then obviously, if you run the game, you I'm gonna minimize this. Uh, you get that, and basically, for those of you who are still a bit stumped on why you'd want to do this in the first place, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one, which is a very common reason, is to cut down on the process time. Uh, that game maker is basically using because if you have multiple rooms, let's say we have another room here, and uh, we just have a whole bunch of, of various objects here. Let's say these are all different objects, and they're all different sprites, and they're automatically being um, processed. However, if you had them as an external uh, file, the game maker wouldn't have to process them until they are basically created in this room. So you know, basically, if you have a humongous game with a whole bunch of sprites, uh, game maker wouldn't have to process them it could just externally load them when it needs it. So that cuts down speed. Um, there somewhat, you know, processing time, so that's really good. Uh, but you could also use this, I found, uh, for sort of like a, um, uh, what is it, like a, like a tile editor, almost like if you ever played Minecraft, like a character kind of creator. Um, so this is the file right here, so if I go ahead and edit this a little bit, you know, just something silly, like that, and then I save it right there, it automatically saves right here in this folder where it's named or where it's saved, if I run this, automatically it should load it, there we go, there is our new 
uh, file right here, a new picture file. And so you could just, you know, do some really cool little stuff like that. So anyway, um, that is external sprite loading. And you can also do this with sounds and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, but I'm not going to get to that right now because it does get pretty complex. And one more thing, I guess, uh, that I want to add, and I might do a separate tutorial on this. If you want to make this sprite move as like an actual player, like load it externally with moving and everything, you would have to make this picture file right here a .gif. So it's basically already moving. And, uh, you know, that gives you, I guess, a little hint if you guys want to go ahead and do this on your own. Um, but I might do a tutorial on it somewhere down the road. But just a little bit of information, a little bit of advice if you want to do something like that. That is how you would go about doing it. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it off here. Sorry if this took too long. Um, I'm a bit tired right now. But hopefully I got it so you guys can understand how this all works and whatnot. Because I have seen a lot of people wondering, you know, oh, okay, I got it to work somewhat. I got the code down, but I don't know what to do with it. So, there. Hopefully you understand it good. And, uh, yeah. So, until next time, guys. Until next video, this is Rex Furry. And feel free to comment, rate, subscribe, you know, if you guys, uh, you guys want to do. And until then, uh, until next video, I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys later.